Hello everyone, welcome back to Full Grown Gaming's Let's Play of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. All I have planned really for this episode is this cavern, or this dungeon, which is called the Dongo's Cavern here. The first thing you gotta do, pick up a bomb, flower, and throw it at the thing. I've always wondered why that is even there. It makes me wonder who put it there, because obviously the Gorons come in here to... Actually, I'm not sure what they do in here, but obviously they come in here, so do they have to rebuild that wall every single time they want to come out or, you know, go in? I don't know. But the first thing, if you guys remember the last episode, Navi, come on now, I'm trying to talk. Anyway, in the last episode, I mentioned the bomb jump, and I actually demonstrated it. In this episode, in just about a second, I'll be showing you how to, you know, use it to your advantage. I'm not going to actually, you know, use it and then, like, keep the results of it. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But if you want to try it out yourself, like, with an actual positive outcome, you can actually use it here. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is just go ahead and take care of the Beemos, I believe they're called. Let's go ahead and examine. Beemos. Watch out for a searching beam. I bet it doesn't like smoke to get inside, which is Navi's way of telling us to use a bomb, obviously. And his head blows up. But anyway, I like how the bomb flowers grow back so fast, but here's how you do the bomb flower jump, which I didn't really explain too well in the last episode. What you have to do, basically, is grab the bomb, drop it with a shield drop, which you just hit R, you know, on the N64 controller, swing your sword, and then walk up to it with Z-targeting and your shield held up. So this is what it looks like. Oh, and, oh man, I messed- what? Every time I, like, try and do it myself, like, to demonstrate it, it always messes up. Hopefully I can get it right this time. There we go. And I forgot to mention that you also have to grab it, like, try and grab it. What'll pretty much happen is Link will keep walking, but he won't be going anywhere. He'll be, like, walking in place. But now that once you've done that, you can actually just stand here, jump straight up here, and you can actually hit that switch right there. So I'm going to actually hit it, but I'm going to show you the rest of the dungeon that you would have had to have done to get here. So pretty much, like, we could just continue, but I'm like I said, I'm going to show you what to do. All right, let's go ahead and... I think there was a rock wall I needed to blow up over here, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm actually not sure what's behind that. All right, completely useless. I mean, it might be, once we get the Mask of Truth, but we, obviously we don't have that right now, it's the last mask you get in the mask trading sequence or whatever, which I showed you guys in the last episode. I can come back and talk to all the masks of, or, you know, the Stone of Truth, Stones of Truth? I don't even know what they're called, actually. Anyway, the weird stones you can talk to with the Mask of Truth, and I'll come back and talk to that one later if I remember, but as of right now, you can't really do anything with it. Obviously, well, if you talk to it or if you hit it with your sword or whatever, you can see what time it is but other than that not really too much you can do all right so also by the way i probably should examine these things they're called baby dodongos so a navy or navi has to say watch out for its leaping attack it will explode after it's defeated and it does if you just hit it once it will watch how ex powerful this explosion is it's pretty it looks as big or bigger than the bomb flower explosion and that's kind of weird that a little thing like that i wonder what inside of it actually makes it explode you know once it's killed that would actually be kind of cool. I know this is kind of like... I mean, I'm majoring in biology, so it kind of interests me. What evolutionary, you know, advantage would blowing up after you die have with your species, you know? Why would that have evolved? I don't know. Anyway, let's continue. No no more uh, biological talking on a Zelda Let's Play. I don't... You know what? One more thing. It's just always like... Thinking about how real life applies to video games isn't something that would really benefit you in any way. It's just interesting to think about how stuff like that, you know, would work in a game world. Anyway, let's go ahead and use the jump slash, you know, technique here. Since I've done that, now the power stab, or this, this thing, will be as powerful as a master sword. You know, jump slash, so. One thing I don't like, let's, well, I keep forgetting this, let's go ahead and investigate. Lazalfos, use your shield well and fight with Z-targeting techniques. Nope, we'll just, uh, stab. The thing I don't like about them, though, is it, if they don't want to, oh my goodness, they can only be hit at certain times. Like, right now, if I tried to shoot my, you know, slingshot at it, it won't work. See, they just kind of dodge it. I don't really like that about the fight. I wish you could just do whatever you wanted to do and beat them, but unfortunately, that's not the case. You actually have to wait for them to stop moving and then, you know, attack. I wonder if I can hit them right here. Oh, obviously not. You know what? I tried to be a little bit smart about it. The one thing, like, a couple things about this game, like, it seems like if you try and outsmart it, sometimes it's like, nope, you gotta do it our way. 
but that's that. Not, it's not hard by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think I lost any hearts in the fight. It's just, it would have been a little faster if I could have shot with a slingshot. That's all. Through this door, I'm not actually sure once again what's back there. I don't know that I ever even went through these doors, you know, when I played through it a long time ago. If I remember, I don't think that's close enough. Let's go ahead and drop it. Oh! If I can, is it maybe a business scrub? I think, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I did come back here back in the day. What are we selling, though? One Deku stick for 15? Why would anybody do that? Well, actually, I do know why somebody would do that. And that is because you actually have to use Deku sticks in this area right here. But is it worth 15 rupees? I guess you can be the judge of that. All the while you're trying to light these torches, there are actual full-grown Dodongos in this cavern. Oh, did I light that? Okay, I did. But there are actual full-grown adult Dodongos in here, and I thought they should have been a little bit more menacing. Like, look how small this is. Link is as tall as these things are, so they're not that, you know, big and bad. I thought the Dodongos would be like huge dinosaurs and stuff like that, but well, when I first played the game, that is. And here we are back at the Switch. So we could have skipped everything that we just did by using that bomb jump technique. And oh, another thing right here. I don't... I'll try it. Well, apparently I failed the jump. But sometimes if I jump off there in that one particular spot, you glitch through the side of that thing and you fall all the way through, like, the floor. It's, I mean, it's not a beneficial glitch whatsoever, so... Be careful. Like, sometimes when you jump slash into things, you'll actually go into the wall a little bit. And if you go at it just right, sometimes it'll be detrimental because you'll actually fall all the way through the level. I think... Through one of these... Is there one over here? Yeah, okay. Yeah, this business scrub, I'm pretty sure, sells Deku Shield. So let's go ahead and... Yeah, Deku Shield, 50 rupees. That actually I can understand the importance of, why it's there. You might be wondering why we would want to buy another one if we already have one. And that is because there are some enemies here that are actually on fire. And if they touch you, or you touch them, whatever, your shield will catch on fire. So, if you want to replace your shield, that's the way to do it. And conveniently hidden behind this wall, I think this is probably going to be the map. And there she is, the map. You know, by the way... Oh man, wasting Deku Nuts. The map and the compass, I don't think, are normally considered to be part of 100% runs. Like, when people do 100% runs, I don't think the map and the compass are usually you know, gotten? Is that correct English? I don't know. But, I, as far as I... I mean, I'm gonna try and get all the mo- I can't talk! Compasses and maps! So, but they're not all that important. Not too hard to get through the game without using them. Alright, so now... I mean, obviously that is kind of suspicious. There's a treasure chest in the middle of these three things. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Yeah, they come to life. Luckily, if you use... Deku Nuts, you can just jump slash them like that, and that kills them. But then they go absolutely crazy, and they start hopping around and blow up, but not too hard. I'm pretty sure that's the only one that's actually alive in here. Yeah, I think this is probably going to be the compass, too. Are they really going to put the compass and the map that close together? Fine. You know what? <laughs> just forget all exploration. Now that we have the compass and the map so easily, I mean, it's not going to be that much of a problem. Here we have one of the cooler puzzles, I think, in the game. It's not too hard. I mean, it's pretty obvious what you gotta do, really. You just gotta get that bomb flower, put it right in the middle here, drop it, run away, and watch what happens. That is awesome. I mean, I didn't, it wasn't hard to figure out, you know, back in the day, but... I don't know, something about that thing blowing up like that was just pretty awesome, actually. Now, you can waste your time, you know, baby-stepping your way up these steps here, climbing up each individual step. Or you can do it in style. I'm pretty sure you guys want to see it in style, right? Let's just backflip all the way up the stairs. Up there, I think it is. Yeah, up there there's actually a gold skull Tullo that we can't get right now. I don't think you can get it right now anyway. But once we get the, I think the long shot we need before we can get that. So I'll be coming back actually to, Dun to Dodongo's Cavern much later in the game. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but over there in that pot there was a, a purple or something, rupee, a red rupee I think. The reason I think that they put these here is so you will have enough money to buy the Deku Shield back if yours gets burned, but just a little theory I have. But as far as Deku Sticks, or Deku, or Gold Skull Tellers, I should say, go, there's actually one right here that we can get. And if uh, the Deku Tree was in the indication, surfaces like this are most likely going to be able to be climbed. And if you think about it, like, it just, it's kind of weird that you can climb on this. There's so much empty space. But if you look just 
Actually, it's touching Link's right foot way back there on that wall. You can see that gold skull that I can't get. Through here, I think there's going to be some of those enemies that uh, light your shield on fire, so I'm going to have to be careful. Yeah, there they are. Fire keys. Let's go ahead and investigate. Oh, oh my goodness. You know what? Pressing buttons already. There we go. One deck. Oh, no. Get away. Oh, oh my goodness. That's so close. But uh, one... You know, what am I trying to say? One shot from the slingshot will take care of them. Before I go up that ladder right there, I want to make sure that I'm not going to get attacked here. Look at that thing. <laughs> oh yeah, you can't get me now, can you? Alright, what they wanted you to do, actually, this is kind of a cool trick that you can do. If What they wanted you to do was actually move that statue so you could get up the ladder. But if you just backflip up it, you can just climb up here without actually having to move the statue, so... I'm actually, a lot of these tricks I found out from watching speedruns and stuff like that. And if you've been, actually it hasn't always been like this, but for the Banjo-Kazooie Let's Play, I've really started hitting it hard with the speedrunning tactics. And like I've said before, I just find it really interesting, you know, to do speedruns. And I also think it's, think it's kind of cool to show the glitches and stuff that go with, especially speedruns in older games like this. Is there one behind? Oh, there he is. Forget that. You're not going to get me. I don't know why, but I just got a really strong flashback to the... Big Boo's Haunt in Super Mario 64. I don't know why that happened. Alright, so let's see. No, there's no bombs around here. I was gonna say, there's actually a kind of another cool trick that you can do. When you do that bomb jump, when you actually do the bomb part of it before you actually do the backflip, you know, straight up in the air, you that if you have that stored up, you can actually skip dialogue like this. So, just for instance, if there's ever an owl, or if the, the owl is ever going to talk to you, you can actually do that bomb trick and save time because the owl won't be able to talk to you. So, there's another cool little trick. I think there's probably a rupee in here. Red. Awesome. And we have full rupees, so that's pretty cool. Now, here we have to throw this bomb flower over there. One thing that I like to do... I mean, I think what you're supposed to do is wait till it is about to blow up and then throw it. But one thing that I've, you know, seen that kind of works is if you throw it in that corner over there... Well, it's not going to work now that I want to do it. But if you can try and get that into the corner over there, usually what it'll do is just kind of stick there in the corner so you don't actually have to time it. I'll try it one more time. Whatever. All right, final time it. I mean, it's just like, I don't know. There's got to be the law of Let's Playing. Every time you want to show something in a Let's Play, it just doesn't work. I don't know why. So I'll just do it the way I think it was supposed to be done. But if you can get it up there on that ledge... I was going to say, if that is not close enough, that's going to be ridiculous. But if you can get up there on the ledge, it's a little bit easier. Well, I wonder what we're going to have to do in this room. Uh, an eye. We already did this puzzle in the Deku Tree, I think. There we go. Like, I don't know what it is, guys. When you, I don't know if you guys have ever played Zelda or Ocarina of Time on the Virtual Console with a GameCube controller. But every time I do... I mean, it's probably like this for... I Wasn't there... I'm pretty sure there was a port to the GameCube of this game too so i'm not sure exactly i didn't really play it but anyway it's just difficult i feel to use the control stick to aim that stuff or the c stick i mean see they just sit here and taunt you come on and deku six don't do anything either there we go all right now let me oh my goodness all right so i think actually you don't actually you don't have to hit them for that trick to work so let me just go ahead and Oh, I'm so- I'm failing. Sorry, guys. I'm failing. Man, these guys are so ch Like, when they make it so you can't hurt them at certain times, I just feel like that's really cheap. I don't know. Other- I mean, it's not like a game breaker or anything, but it's just kind of annoying. There, got him. I wonder what would have happened if I had started that jump before- or while that cutscene started playing right there. I wonder if I would have fallen. Down there, you can actually see the previous little- Battlegrounds we had with the Lizalfos. And don't fall down there or else you're gonna have to spend a whole lot of time getting back up here, obviously. I actually don't remember what the next room is here. Of course, another puzzle that's exactly the same as the other one. But to make this one different, they added one more eye that you have to shoot. I don't know. I just... You reusing the same puzzle twice in like two seconds was kind of... Kind of shocking i guess after playing it again i don't know up here though we have oh no okay i made it i was about to have to uh, cut some stuff out there up here we have the bomb bag which back in the day getting to the spot it seems like it took me 
just remembering back in the day. It seems like it took me a while to figure out how to get up here to the bomb bag, so... But these... The thing is, when I go back and play this game, it kind of astounds me how back in the day I used to consider this hard. Kinda, but now it's just like the dungeons seem smaller. I don't know why. And it's kind of like that for everything. It just going back to like the old schools or something, it just seems smaller. But anyway, down there, I'm not gonna go in there right now, but you can equip the bombs. I mean, there are two more business scrubs in there, but I don't need to buy anything. Pretty stocked on all my items. And if you hit the switch right here, that thing on the bottom floor, like the p platform or whatever, will actually raise up here. So if we fall back down there, we don't have to go all the way through the dungeon to get back. And I'm kind of glad it. Usually, Navi will tell you that that's what she or what that platform does. And I was gonna say, like, sometimes I'll do practice before an episode or whatever. And I was gonna say that it was kind of pointless for that to happen because it shows you the platform raising and stuff like that. I thought I was gonna fall off there, but surprised she didn't. Uh, Give me her two cents on the the matter there. Here, obviously, you can see me dropping bombs. Apparently, that's a pretty reliable way of getting into the eyes. What I used to do is just hold it and try and drop it right over the edge into the eyes. But in this Let's Play, just before your very eyes, I found a way. Apparently, if you just hold the bomb and try and fall off, it'll drop right in. Over here, if you throw a bomb, you know, break this wall. If you have your shield burned already and you don't have a Deku shield and you open this, you actually get a free Deku shield. But since we already have our Deku shield, it gives us a blue rupee. So I actually think that you should wait, like not open that just in case your shield gets burned in, that, in the next area because there's going to be more fire keys in there. So if your shield gets burned while you're in there, you can just go back up and get a free Deku shield. That's just my two cents. Here we have a kind of a cool thing. Actually, some pretty cool things in this area here. If I swear if they hit- No! Okay, fine. You know what? I should have done that before I started to climb up on that platform. Oh my goodness. It seems like the Z-targeting sometimes doesn't go as far as I would like it to. Just- Ah, there we go. Alright, so now anyway- Yeah, I had to edit out something there. Phone ringing. Don't want that in the commentary. Anyway. In this next area, I'm not gonna worry about if I get hit by fire keys or not actually now, because even if they do, I think it only takes away a fourth of a heart anyway. And if they can't take my shield, it's already burned. Okay, it takes away half a heart, whatever. But if we bomb this thing, we're I'm pretty sure there's a gold skull tulla in here. Apparently it's a door. I hope there's a gold skull tulla behind the door. I'm just gonna look ridiculous. There there's one. Alright, so let's see how much or how powerful a bomb is. Wow, it kills me. Oh, never mind. He killed the Gold Skull Tulla. I thought he killed the Armos in one hit. And by the way, I never investigated this thing. Stop its movement and then destroy it? Basically, Navi's way of telling us to use a Deku Stick, or a Deku Nut, and then do that. Okay, good. I was gonna s That's kind of- Alright, you know what? Not gonna complain. It was my own fault. But now that we've done that, I want to show you kind of another cool thing that you can do. Basically, there's supposed to be a little puzzle here. Let me go ahead and take care of that fire keys real quick. There we go. Anyway, there's a puzzle here where you're supposed to... Let me show you what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to move this block right there to push this block off, and then use it to push that block off so you can get up there. But you can just jump straight up here and run by. Like, I don't know why they didn't see that people would be able to do that. I don't know. So not really much of a puzzle when you can literally just skip the entire thing. While I'm up here... I'm gonna go- whoa, almost rolled off there. While I'm up here, I'm gonna go ahead and push this off, but there's kind of another cool trick that I want to show you guys. Let me go ahead and push it off, though. And then while I'm up here, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot down the fire keys. Or not. Okay, this is just getting embarrassing. Like I said, sometimes it's kind of hard to aim with the, the GameCube controller. Where's he at? There we go, not that bad. Anyway, kind of another cool trick I want to show you guys, and for this trick, I feel like I'm doing a magic show or something, I gotta equip the bugs. So let's go ahead and dump the bugs out. Pick them back up. Hopefully they didn't patch this on the virtual console release or I'm gonna look ridiculous again. But if we stand right here, I gotta get this pretty much lined up just right. If you stand on the button, by the way, that happens. But as soon as you step off the button, it goes back, you know, up or down, I guess. What you're supposed to do is take that block over there and put it on the switch so you can go through the door. But this trick, let me see if this will work. 
Hope I think that worked. All right. So hopefully this will work because it will raise up the. There we go. So far so good. Oh, I didn't have enough time. It's gonna go back down. All right. Anyway, let me go ahead and explain it real quick before I try it again. I think my bugs are gone, so forget that. But you saw it, how it worked a little bit. If you do a back flip like that and you drop your bugs as soon as you or like or while you're in the air, you will land on the switch, and for whatever reason, it will stay pressed for longer than it should. So you have just enough time to get out of there and go through the door without actually having to put the block on it. So what some people do for like, I guess, speed runs and stuff is forget all that stuff that I did with the gold skull Tella. Just go straight through, you know, and not have to worry about putting the switch on the block. And there are actually other doors that you can do that with, as, or not doors, but switches you can do that with as well without actually having to, you know, put something on the switch to press it down. You can just put bugs on it and it'll... Actually, I think you can put any... C button item on it and it'll work. Luckily, they put bombs there just in case you didn't have any. And I love how I forgot to go get that shield after I was just telling you guys that if my shield gets burned, I'm gonna go back and get it. Oh, is this the Dodongo that I've been waiting for? I think it is King Dodongo Infernal Dinosaur. That, the music and everything here, I'm not sure if this played during Goma's fight or not, but let me go ahead and equip Deku Sticks. I'm not sure if it played during Goma's fight or not, but for some reason, just that little jingle is just awesome. Alright, so let's do that real quick. Oh man, oh he's gonna roll. Luckily, like, it's not hard to dodge him whatsoever. All you gotta do is step literally two feet to the right, and he won't be able to hit you. But it's pretty classic fight, you gotta throw bombs in his mouth. And then you get an opportunity to hit him, so... What? Man, I'm just... You know what? From now on, I'm not gonna try and do the power stab thing anymore, because it seems like I can't get it to work ever, because... I don't know, I guess I'm just not used to the GameCube controller. But I'm pretty sure usually, like, four rounds of bombs will, you know, destroy them. So let's see. I think this is gonna be three here. Oh, okay, three. Never mind. Video game rule of three applies to King Dodongo, even, so that's kind of surprising. Reminds me of Terminator 2, by the way. <laughs> and that's the end of King Dodongo. I like how him going in the fire completely hardens and solidifies the lava, and it cooled off so fast that we can now walk on it. But anyway, that's our what? Four, five, six, seventh heart? That's more than I usually have getting to this point. Usually, like, I'll just have five because I don't even go for heart pieces and stuff. Or, you know, the extra hard pieces I don't usually go for. But for the Let's Play, I decided to do 100%. Pretty convenient war, literally right to the very entrance of Dodongo's Cavern. It's me, Darunia. Well done! Oh my! Take it easy! Thanks to you, we can once again eat the delicious rocks from the Dodongo's Cavern until our stomachs burst. So apparently that answers my question at the beginning of the episode. What a wild adventure! It will make an incredible story! Hopefully you guys, you guys don't hear the thunder going on out there. I can't believe that the Dodongos suddenly appeared in such great numbers! And that big rock blowing the cave. Blocking the cave! All this trouble must have been caused by that Gerudo thief, Ganondorf! He said, give me the spiritual stone. Only then will I open the cave for you. You, on the other hand, risked your life for us. Kid, I like you. How's about you and I become sworn brothers? No, there's no big ceremony involved. Just take this as a token of our friendship. If it's the spiritual stone of fire, I will gladly accept. And it looks like it's going to be. One thing that is just kind of weird to me is basically what you can gather from that conversation is that Ganondorf, you know, put the rock there so they couldn't go in there and eat the rocks or whatever. Why could they not have just picked up the bomb flower that was up there, there was already a Goron up there, why couldn't he have just picked it up and thrown the bomb down there? Don't mean to nit nitpick or anything, but it just doesn't make sense how I have to come throw the bomb to open up the cave, you know? Any oh, and another thing, how are the Dodongos getting in there if the cave was blocked? Questions for thought. So here's the Goron's Ruby, otherwise known as the Spiritual Stone of Fire. 
and we don't need or no don't know what he means by swarm can't talk don't know what he means by swarm brothers but we will actually kind of find that out much later in the game brother you'll keep brushing up on your skills as you travel won't you you should go see the great fairy on top of death mountain she will power you up hey everybody let's see off our brother it's kind of cool that we're part of the Goron, you know, circle of friendship here. Not sure how much I want to be a friend of them, though, because as you guys saw, yeah, having a big Goron yeah, hug. Pretty funny here because as you guys saw when Darunia tried to give us like a pat on the back, he almost killed us. So We finished a dungeon here, guys, so in the next episode, I'm going to actually probably just make my way up death mountain i'm not sure how long that's going to take so i'll probably actually do a little more of the mask side quest in the next episode so i want to thank you guys for watching this episode of let's play the legend of zelda ocarina of time and i want to see you guys back for the next episode